Hey everybody. Hi everybody. Welcome to the Ping Pong Podcast. What's the what's going on here in the foreground? These are hat and glove sets for $14.99 here at Sears, which is a hot seller, I'm sure, in sunny Southern California. It's been pretty warm lately. It has been very warm. But we have hats and gloves. Hats and gloves are fun. You know what they also don't have downstairs at Sears Del Amo? Coronavirus. Do you know why? There's nobody here. You know why? Because this is where we have the Ping Pong Podcast. And we're at a different table today. We're at the... I don't know what the name of it is. Nope. It's the... What happened to the price tag? Uh, oh, Sportcraft. Sportcraft. $129, ladies and gentlemen. It's not super fancy, but it plays pretty good for $129. It's like, if you don't have kids, so we're going to jump on it. Perfectly nice table. Pants. Pants! One to nothing, ladies and gentlemen. I already tightened my belt, so my pants wouldn't come down as much, but we'll see whether I have to re I talked to Sabrina. She went to a club on Friday night and dressed in, dressed in goth gear. But she had, like, black lipstick and dark eyes and was intimidating everybody, boys and girls alike. And she's 19, so it was an 18 and older club. So I think she went with some friends who were able to drink, but... They mostly they kind of went to hang out, listen to loud music, and sulk. <laughs> sulk? Yeah, it's a goth club. They're all wearing dark makeup and costumes and such. It's not like she had an okay time. It's not what she normally does. She usually should go to a board game club on Fridays. <clears throat> this Friday she got somebody who wanted to go to a club, so she went to a club. She said a woman came up to her and uh, complimented her on her uh, legs and behind. <laughs> She's like, thanks? <laughs> so the woman said, I'm not a lesbian, but boy, are your uh, features impressive. So, okay. Well. <laughs> so obviously we're not in New York. We said we were going to, but then we didn't. For everybody who follows along on the Ping Pong Podcast, and they're like, why are you not in New York? Yeah, we're not in New York. Although we could be in New York. It's a ping pong table. It could be anywhere. Right? Uh, except this is our standard everyday series where we normally play um, during exercise. I so, think this is Ping Pong Podcast number 97. So 97? Only three more until the 100th Ping Pong Tacular. We don't have a whole lot of King's tickets this week because we were expecting to be gone. So I went with Jacob yesterday and saw King's beat the Devils. Woo hoo! They beat the Penguins on Wednesday, so they're playing really well, despite giving away all their players. What was the final score? Uh, it was, I guess, two one in the shootout. Two. Okay. Or no, it was uh, uh, in overtime. What was the final score in regulation? No, it was two one in overtime. Or two one overtime. Last weekend they lost in the shootout. I don't know, they've been playing really well, even though they trade away a whole bunch of their players for basically draft picks. But they've been playing much younger and quicker players. So it's actually been going pretty well. So get rid of your whole team and play better. Get rid of Toffoli, and they got rid of Martinez, and they got rid of uh, Clifford. Clifford. We do miss Clifford's kids, though. They were awesome, cute. Yeah, we sit real close to the families at hockey, right? so we kind of don't get to know them, but we at least get to watch, watch them. Watch we get to watch the games. There's kind of an aisle between us and them, and it's kind of rarely do you cross those lines. Although, you know, if somebody's spilled something, you'll hand them a napkin, or you'll say, congratulations if somebody's kid just got you know, promoted or just got their first goal or whatever. Um, we were watching uh, the new guy, Velarde, Sergei, Velarde's. Velarde's family was there when he was called up. And then yesterday, Anderson's family was there, but it was interesting that not only did Anderson get called up, I think it's Mikey Anderson, but his brother plays for New Jersey, and so they were wearing their Kings gear, but you know they were rooting for both players, so it was kind of neat to see. And the uh, MSG broadcaster who does the uh, New Jersey Devil games uh, was up interviewing them. It was kind of a neat day to have one Don't kid have making their NHL debut, playing against the other kid, and there are clips of the two of them kind of fighting for pucks and stuff like that. It was kind of neat to see. And you know we didn't see it in real time because there's just too much going on. But they, you know, I saw that in the highlights afterwards. Yeah, I don't necessarily know that the two brothers are fighting each other because it's down in the corner and you can't see who's fighting who. But it's like we were trying to play, pay attention to Hughes, who's sort of the new number one draft pick that plays for 
New Jersey and P.K. Subban, who I didn't even notice, and trying to watch the play, and all uh, the music and dancing and song. Did um, Quick or Peterson playing gold? Uh, quick. Huh? Quick. Quick. Okay. I, I didn't see any of it, so. Okay. Uh, Peterson won versus Pittsburgh Peterson on Wednesday. Peterson won the, the, the last time when we won Wednesday, so. You know, all these new young guys changed the complexion of the Kings team. Tifoli and Alec Martinez and uh, Kyle Clifford were not exactly known for their speed. Uh, Clifford for sure was not known for his speed. They also traded away Jack Campbell and they got Trevor Moore and Black and Gillardi and they got Anderson and they got Blake Lazard and they got uh, Roy and Hutton and Curtis McDermott, yeah. who we call Kermit, even though I know his name is Curtis. Right, the alliteration is a lot better, you'll have to admit. His name is Curtis McDermott. Curtis McDermott. Right, but we call him Kermit McDermott because it it's, it's funnier. And the alliteration and the rhyming is much more fun. <laughs> we don't have a lot of rules, ladies and gentlemen. Keep it on the table. Don't chase it. Don't have to pick it Don't up. Don't hit it too hard. Nobody wants to bend over to pick it up. Try to get it over there if you can. Try to hit it on one bounce if you can. Or not. Mm. Hey! See, it's effective, right? Yeah, I made it. But it's funny because normally you think that the $129 table would be the worst table. We said we, we said we weren't in New York, but did we tell them why we're not in New York? But the hundred twenty nine dollars table plays really well, as long as you don't have kids crawling on it. Yeah, don't let kids don't. You don't want to roll it around. It doesn't even. Yeah, it's got wheels, but they're little well. It's casters. got wheels on the center legs, but not the outer legs. The outer right, legs. but you, you tip it up. Yeah. So do you want to say why we aren't in New York? Well, a number of factors. One of which is the non-essential flying during virus outbreaks. We didn't really need to go to New York. And we also reevaluated the artwork we were planning on bidding on and kind of decided that it wasn't worth the week long hotel night cost. We could save that money for something else. So we had refundable hotel that we got refunded. And we had refundable airlines that could come back, we refunded. And the one going was on miles. And we're not sure it's worth the fee to reinstate the miles. Oops, sorry. Go! Oh. It bounced off the hat. Oh, I really had visions of saving that. I thought you might. Didn't happen because of the carpet, ladies and gentlemen. It's not me, it's the carpet. It's the carpet. So we just said, you know, the amount of money that we would burn from not canceling this stuff was much less than the amount we would spend going. And uh, we had so much work to yeah, do. The, yeah, the cost of one airline ticket was inconsequentially significant to the cost of a week's worth of hotel and dining out in New York. Shows and art. Shows. <laughs> it's like, you better, if you're going to go, you better mean it. <laughs> yeah, you got to go and you got to mean it. So, you know, not wanting to spread viruses from there to here or here to there, not wanting to get caught in quarantines here or there. Yeah, that's really the problem. It's not getting sick. It's you accidentally get caught in quarantine. You're stuck somewhere for 20 days while they test you. We've decided that we're going to get sick. We want to get sick at home. Yep. We're going to be sick in our own beds if we get it. The main thing they said is wash your hands. Don't sneeze on people. Call, you know, the doctor don't, if you don't feel well. Practice not touching your face. Don't touch your face. Thanks. Because they said that's the biggest spread is you touched something else and then touched your nose or your mouth. So if you don't touch your face, oh, sorry. No, it was my fault. <laughs> well, it went off the end of the paddle, so it was kind of dual purpose. Yes, don't touch your face. Or pool derpus. Well, okay then. I, I dare you to say that a second time. Pool derpus. Pool derpus. Maybe that should be the title play. of this episode. Pool I don't know purpose. how many of you play ping pong at home. But for us, it's part of our exercise routine where we go walk around the mall. It's a weird bounce. We're mall walkers. And so the fact that we can play ping pong here, and not just that we can play here. Oh, sorry. There's sort of a question as to whether we are welcome to play here or not. 
And it's like, you know, if there's one ping pong table and they let you play, and then or they come and say, you know, you can play for a few minutes, that's one thing. But they've now built us a long line. There's five <laughs> different ping pong tables. Are, it's like somebody's got to play. There are currently five ping pong tables in a row. And there's a crooked one over there. And there's a crooked one over there. Knocked out. Would you say this is competitive, ladies and gentlemen? Definitely not. <laughs> Dancing in them. Some underpants over here. Cool comfort, lightweight, breathable mesh. Oh, we didn't discuss the hats. We didn't. And, and, well, maybe I did. Fourteen ninety nine. Oh, What a bargain for gloves and hats. Is anybody looking for winter gear in March? This is, this is youth sizes. Oh, yeah, maybe ski week, right? Somebody's going to go on spring break ski week. Come get your hats for your youth. Downstairs at Sears. I missed. A lot of underpants here in the background. We are definitely in the underwear department at men's workout wear. So if any of you have the coronavirus or are quarantined, we stay home. You. Don't yeah. sneeze on people. Yeah, stay home. It'll be all right. We already voted, so we don't have to worry about that. But you all should vote on Tuesday. Or before, if you're from LA. No matter who you vote for, I'm sure to vote, because otherwise, Somebody else is choosing our country's leaders. Besides you, we trust you more than we do those other people. Because you are smart enough to watch the Ping Pong Podcast. Yeah! We know. We want a ping pong centered government style. We know that's your main focus when choosing a candidate is their ping pong worthiness. So I voted for Amy Klobuchar in the Democratic primary. I actually just started being a Democrat. I was uh, libertarian. Originally, I think, and then I was Republican for a while, and I think it had to do mostly with voting in the primaries, but I think I've always voted for Democratic presidential candidates oh, and uh, senators and such, and congressmen. <coughs> um, and you voted for Pete. I voted for Pete. Pete? Who is Pete? Pete Buttigieg. What is he? Running for president. Where did he come from? Uh, mayor of Indiana, town I can't remember, South Bend, right? And what do you like about him? Um, I think he's very level headed. I think he's got a lot of experience. I like the fact that he was, even though it was um, a mayor and not at federal level, I think that running a city government gave him enough experience to have a little uh, input and insight into running the federal government. Uh, I like that he's a veteran. Uh, I like his uh, current debate tactics that I loved were, you know, let's not fight amongst ourselves, let's work together. How do we bring people together? How do we do things together? And I like that message. I like Amy Klobuchar because she did her announcement in the snow. <laughs> I like her too. And she got all covered in snow. And also, one day I was at uh, LAX picking up one of the kids. Most likely Sabrina since she's like Sabrina. more flying than, me, than Jacob. Lately. Lately. And there was a guy holding a sign that said Klobuchar. <laughs> I'm like, huh, I wonder what's going to happen with this. And uh, he walked away, he's their driver, walked away to the uh, area of Terminal 1, you know that at LAX, the Southwest. Southwest. That, uh, walked over to the, one of the boards to look at what time they were supposed to come in and whether they had arrived, and she walked out. And I said, he went that way. So now Andy Klobuchar and I are best friends. She didn't say anything back to me. And she pointed <laughs> where to find the driver, because there was pretty much not going to be anybody else named Klobuchar getting off the plane. Yeah, but I also think it was the first time I ever met a senator. I don't know if that's technically meeting, but I met some Congress people. Uh, and I've heard presidents speak, but I've not met, like I've walked met, up to them too mm, closely. Janice Hahn. She's not a congressman. No. But in terms of political... Well, we had dinner once with Jeff Pink, and he was friends with Patrick Kennedy, who was a congressman. Remember that? I've had dinners with many more sporting legends than I have with political figures. Marty McSorley. Anyway, 
Amy Gorshaw seems to be kind of a centrist Democrat who's kind of like, you know, let's fix it, but let's not break it at the same time. So that's kind of like matter. And she's you know, kind of folksy. And, you know, voting for a woman seems to make sense to me. Yeah, I was originally was. planning on voting for Elizabeth Warren, but in the last two debates that we watched, she was just so um, arrogant is the right word. Rude, mean, vicious. It's like, I'll vote for your president. And, you know, I don't necessarily agree with your policies, but I do think you're smart. But it doesn't look like she's going to be winning the nomination at this, this point. So it didn't really matter. We didn't know yet that Joe Biden was going to do so well in South Carolina, which might. Right, because we voted Wednesday. It's now Sunday, so things have changed. But you know, I'm proud of voting for Amy. I assume you're proud of voting for Pete. What? You're proud of voting for Pete. I'm proud, I'm proud of voting of for Pete. I, I want, if, even if Pete doesn't end up getting the nomination, I want the Democratic leaders to know that there is support for him and that he um, has people behind him, especially if they're considering him for other things like cabinet or. Else. I don't know. You know? Vice president. Vice president or cabinet position or Veterans Affairs. Who knows? Veterans Affairs, yeah, could be lots of stuff. So, you know. I like Amy. I like Amy. Amy is my second choice actually. I was having a tough time deciding between I think my first choice was probably Kamala Harris. Ah! She dropped out early. So currently it looks at that gets down to Bernie Sanders. Joe Biden. Joe Biden. Michael Bloomberg is kind of a wild card because he hasn't even been on a ballot yet. But that starts on Tuesday, so I guess we'll see. I assume he's going to get some delegates on Tuesday, but it'd be pretty funny if he spent $500 million and didn't get any delegates out of it. Or got one delegate. <laughs> I think there's going to be a lot of support for Biden after his win in South Carolina. And there's certainly a lot of support for Bernie Sanders. Well, I think he's a very nice man, but not all the Bernie supporters, or at least the people who are too nice. Pants! Um, yeah, there seems to be kind of this... Bernie or Busk thing that I don't really like. I think you should vote blue no matter who because it's better than the criminal enterprise that is currently in the White House. You have to keep an eye on that. As much as I'm sure Bernie is a nice man, it's not worth keeping Trump. No. Just to get Bernie. Yeah, the people who are Bernie or nothing are in part one of the reasons we got Trump in the first place. I did not notice that we don't have a squeaking escalator, and you know why? Because the escalator not running. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Usually, there's two sets of escalators. We usually take the ones at the far end. Farthest away from sporting goods. Coming at you. Oh, that was my turn. So now I get to dance. And look at the underwear department. Underpants. Underpants. Well, behind me is inflatable pools. Okay, it's one meter in the inflatable pool. It is entertaining. They sell inflatable pools and ski hats and gloves at the same time. But only in California. A quick report for those who are interested. My plantar fasciitis is doing much better. But it's a book report, not foot report. Foot report. Foot report. I learned some exercises to do at the doctor's office last week, and they said it would be better in two or three weeks, and it's getting much better. It felt like that kind of thing where I was always going to have it. So now it's feeling like there's some hope. And we can walk, which I really love doing. So when we come to the mall, it's mostly to walk, even though it seems like it's mostly to make the ping pong podcast. Yeah. Just because we only video the, the ping pong part. I don't think you'd want to the see other, The walking part's not very exciting to video cast. So foot news is good news. And Jacob and Sabrina's spring break is coming up. And it's actually the same week as Dodgers opening day, so that's exciting. We're talking about maybe going to Phoenix for opening uh, for uh, spring training, but it seems like we're too busy at this point. <laughs> and if we were gonna go, we were talking about driving so we wouldn't have any issue with the plane. The unnecessary flying, but it seems like an, a lot of time. We don't like driving that much. Yes. <laughs> and Jacob's got our car that we like the most. The Jacob's car is in the shop, and so we gave them our Crowd 4. And so now we got my folks. They've got two cars. They've got a Toyota Highlander, and they've got a Lexus. NX 
300 H. Max 300 H. I just like, had to learn that, so I just know that. I, mean, you know, it's, I won't remember tomorrow, but. It's clean, safe transportation. It's just not what we would probably choose as the kind of cars that we would want to drive. So you know, it's nice to have in a backup. I but, choose that transportation over no transportation every day. But yes, none of us is a big fan. It's like um, Rick Shea. Wee! It's fun for you, ladies and gentlemen. Fun for you. A whole bunch of cables sticking out of the wall over there. <laughs> like, Big cables. like audio visual cables. Like a blue one and a red one and a yellow one. And a... Maybe they're for the Ping Pong Podcast? I don't know. Maybe they were for. Uh, um, cashier terminal, or maybe there was a video display board over here in the corner, or you know, I don't know. Something, something auto visual equipment over there. So there are cables, ladies and gentlemen, if you'd like to hear or see about the cables. I'm sure that every, ooh, I'm sure everybody would be dying to look at the cables. I know you are, I know he is, and he's run right over there and get that stuff. The cables? Get the run right over and take a look at those cables. I'm going to see where so our time exciting. is at. Yeah, it's about time for the final volley, ladies and gentlemen. Oh, final volley, okay. It's actually, this net is blue and this net is black. It is blue. They may not be able to see it because they're looking at it from... I'm just letting you know, if you want to see the blue versus the black ping pong nets, come to Sears Del Amo downstairs. The panoply of uh, non-pandemic ping pong paraphernalia. <laughs> I hope you've had a marvelous time today. Thanks for watching. Don't rub your face. Don't sneeze on people. Be kind to one another, ladies and gentlemen. Thanks for watching. Like, share, and comment. We appreciate it.